Learning Hand Surgery One Point at a Time In 1878, Cleland J. described a ligament. He said that the main function of this ligament was to help anchor and suspend the skin during both flexion and extension and prevent it from bagging. But he showed it without any landmarks of the finger such as the joints or tendon sheath or annular pulleys. A study done in 2014 showed that the Cleland's ligament could actually consist of three layers and four parts. If this represents the finger, the proximal phalanx bone, the fibrous flexor sheath with the tendons, the extensor tendon and the digital neurovascular bundle, we know that the Grayson's ligament is superficial or volar to this neurovascular bundle and the Cleland's ligament should be somewhere dorsal to it. It actually consists of three layers. Layer 1 consists of the dorsal fibers originating from the extensor tendon adventitia. Layer 2 shows the middle fibers originating from the floor of the flexor tendon sheath and layer 3 originating from the fascia covering the flexor tendon sheath. You can see a single sheet of Grayson's ligament on your left. But the Cleland's ligament consists of four different parts according to the position. At the PIP joint, a smaller component passing proximally called the PIP P or proximal, larger ligament passing from the joint distally called the PIPD. From the distal part of the middle phalanx and distal interphalangeal joint, we have the DIPP originating from the A5 pulley and the DIPD or the distal portion originating from the C3 pulley.